Cooking with Jesse. <laughs> Oh, yum, yum. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. I am Fit by Jay Lee, and this is my kitchen. Today it is Sunday, so we're gonna be making a delicious Sunday brunch, some gluten-free French toast casserole. So let's get into our ingredients for today's cooking adventure. We will be needing our main ingredient, bread. This is a gluten-free cinnamon raisin bread from Trader Joe's that I will be using as my bread base. I will also be using some vanilla extract and some ground cinnamon. We're gonna need a few eggs. Also gonna need your milk of choice. I'm gonna be using a vanilla almond milk. You can use whatever suits your fancy. Oat milk, coconut milk, regular milk, if you wanna be fancy. Uh, but I will be using the almond beverage because that's what I usually use for my milk substitute. And you're also gonna need a little bit of butter to help grease the pan. We're gonna use a nice square casserole dish today. And then you just need a cutting board and an oven. This is a one dish like super fast, easy recipe that's so delicious and just so good. A great way to start a morning because you're gonna get the protein from the eggs, you're gonna get the carbs from the bread, and you're also going to get some nice fruit if you wanna add it on the side. I picked a little mix of raspberries and blackberries for today because they are my favorite berries. So a little vitamin C, a lot of good things here. Uh, going into this dish and of course what would brunch be without bottomless mimosas now if you're like me I make my mimosa sans the orange juice so we will just be having some lovely champagne this morning Kaylee and I while we make and while we consume this dish but Kaylee's gonna have to open this baby because I'm usually good with champagne but our girl Tara Lynn she gives me hard times she really does just the one the one that won't open. Her heart will not open for me. So, Kaylee will get on this, we'll get this champagne popping, and then we'll get started on our delicious French toast casserole. Popping bottles with the ice. Getting slizzed. <laughs> when we drink, we do it right. Maybe I'm messing up the words. <laughs> I personally sick. rip the whole thing off. Oh, you really go for it. I just don't like anything in my way obstructing me. Why would you? Just don't, I don't see why we need that in our lives. I love that there's just a spatula next to you. <laughs> <laughs> I always use my knee, I don't know why. Oh, ooh, yes. Cheers. Cheers. So tasty. This is a one pot job. This casserole is so easy that you're literally gonna make it and then you're gonna be like, what? I just made a whole breakfast that easy, that was like that balanced and really delicious. Look at me go. Yes, it is this easy. Yes, you only need to get one pan dirty. And we are gonna help ourselves by greasing the pan. I greased with my grass-fed butter. You can grease with any kind of oil. I just wouldn't recommend going for like an olive oil or anything that's got a strong flavor to it because it's gonna mix with the sweet flavors of the bread and the berries and everything that we're going for right now. I'm also gonna preheat my oven to 350. I'm gonna let that preheat while I get this all together. First, I'm gonna do, since I'm gonna do this whole loaf for this casserole today, I usually go an egg per two slices. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 11-ish, um, 12, 12 slices. So I'm actually gonna do maybe five eggs instead of six. I always like to go a little under and then I can always add more. That's the thing. Always underestimate with cooking because it's easy to add a little, but it's hard to take away. Go for a little less because we're also adding in milk and we don't want it to get too, too watery because we want the bread to essentially absorb this mixture that we're making. I'm such an eyeball cook that I like I look at all the things and I'm like, does this seem right? I'm gonna start with four, and if I need to add another, I will. Next ingredient is the milk. So adding this in, I just kind of pour until it's evenly spread. Again, you don't want it to be too, too watery, so 
eyeballing it, but you can see I kind of let it go around the eggs. So I'm putting in a teaspoon of vanilla. Next, I'm going to go crazy with my favorite spice, cinnamon. Nice addition. Just slap it on there as much as you like. If you don't love cinnamon like I do, and you don't put it on everything, maybe just hold back a little. But if you're like me and you just love cinnamon, I can't get enough of it. I put it on everything. Put it in my coffee, put it on apples. Now we're getting to the fun part. We're just gonna mix this all together, this nice little mixture. Make sure those eggs are beaten. Lovely. So I've got my mixture. Now I'm gonna take my bread. I am gonna use the whole loaf. We're gonna cut her up, I think into fours, maybe six. So I'm cutting it down to like square pieces like this. And then I'm just gonna plop them right into that mixture. Again, you can always add more of the mixture if you need it. But it's also just eggs, so if you have a little like baked egg in there, not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I've got about half the loaf in here. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a mix. Just make sure that all gets coated. And it's not going to expand, so keep that in mind. Like the bread is already baked. We're more baking it for the egg. So I might add some more, but I think I'm gonna make a mixture separately and I'll pour it over top once I get the rest of this bread cut. Talk about a well-done breakfast. Raisins are also really good for your digestive system. Nice little gut scrubbers there. Okay, bread has been chopped. I for sure need more of liquid. I think I'm gonna do another four eggs. So to make my pour over version, I'm basically gonna do what I just did in the pan, outside of the pan. I know I said this was a one pot thing. I did my best, but this is honest cooking. Sometimes you gotta make it work before you make it twerk. I'm dead. <laughs> I cracked myself up. <laughs> I cracked myself up. <laughs> Stop it. Cool, so we got that mixed up, and this one I'm just gonna pour over the top. Looking so good, so fresh. So, for one loaf of the gluten-free bread, the consensus was eight eggs, milk, cinnamon to taste, and vanilla. Now that I've kind of turned it a little, gotten the less soaked pieces on the bottom, I'm gonna just let this sit and soak for another couple minutes, and then we're gonna go ahead and pop her in the oven. And that's it, we'll eat in like 20 minutes. How long is it in the oven for? Around 20. <laughs> Again, eyeball. For eggs at 350, I usually say like 15, 20 minutes. Depends like if you're making egg cups, a little different. Depends the pan you're using. A lot of factors. I just keep an eye on it. This is really, <laughs> give more directions, Jesse. Be more vague. <laughs> this is the vaguest cooking show. <laughs> I do know one thing, that champagne and French toast go together perfectly. I will double check the time. I know, I have it written down somewhere. <laughs> it's somewhere in here. I'll figure it out. I am gonna put her in the oven now. So, okay. I'm right on in. All right, say bye-bye. We'll see you in 15 and check on it. And that's, that's part of it. <laughs> there you go. There we go. That looks done to me. Oh, that looks good. So how long did we have it in for? So we ended up having the casserole in for 38 minutes and she looks so good and delicious. So we're gonna let her just kind of rest for a little bit and then we'll go ahead and serve. Slight detour as we pulled this out of the oven at 38 minutes and realized that it wasn't quite done yet because I cut into it, it was still a little runny. So we put her back in, I upped the temperature to 375 for the last 15 minutes. So we popped her in for another 15 minutes and now she had this like raised middle. She looked beautiful when I pulled her out and as I checked the inside, I could see all the way down that it was not runny in the middle. So I'm gonna get ready to go ahead and serve this so that Kayla and I can have a great brunch. All right. So we dressed with some maple syrup, berries, some berries, some maple syrup, some lovely delicious goodness, of course. Time to dig in. Give her a little test. Mm. I don't hate to toot my own horn, but it's good. It's good. I love French toast. I love French toast too. It's so easy. It's a great, like, full balance breakfast if you're getting the right stuff. And I always think of 
French toast. It tastes great with a berry. I love a berry. Mm -hmm. The top is like crispy. Like mm -hmm. I feel like, you know? I like that though. I like the front. inside is soft. Again, mm -hmm. we had to give it that extra time so it wouldn't be runny. It's definitely baked all the way through, but I love that the top has like this little crispy top, mm -hmm. and then the inside's like soft and warm and just like cozy Sunday morning, like eggy. You don't feel like cooking. This is a perfect dish because you can just throw it together. You can even throw it together the night before, keep it in the fridge, and then pop it in the oven. Mm -hmm. I probably would not recommend doing that in a glass dish because it might break, but if you have like a metal dish that would be totally fine to do but it's so easy like mm -hmm. did i even cook i don't remember <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching this episode of in the kitchen with fit by day lee we will see you here next time we're gonna make some delicious food soon <laughs> bye i do like it all right good uh-huh you never made it right nope <laughs>